He should be here within a minute. All right. We All right. Wait. Alan, you can start whenever I have a recording to be legal here. So. Okay. So we got Andy. Yeah. Bev. Bev. Um, Richard? I approve using this amendment. Yes. And who else we got here? Ted? Yeah, I'm here. It's, a, it's okay with me. Okay. I think we got everyone except. Um, Hang on, let me check. Chris. As soon as he joins, I'll let him in. Okay. All right. Just um, we've asked also, we've had some response to the fact that we need a new member, another member of the GEC. And actually, we need one member and two alternates because we have no alternates right now. Alternates can participate in the meetings, but they just don't vote in the meetings. Um, so thank you very much for. Um, the interest for Jay and Bill, and I guess that's all we have with us today. Uh, Ellen, I, I do want to mention an alternate can uh, vote in a meeting if there is not a if he makes up the quorum for a missing full member. I'm, yes, you're right. I'm sorry, Andy. You're right. All right, um, but right now we want to move right on to. Um, the master plan and so that we can let uh, Tim go as soon as possible. And um, Hang on, Alan. Uh, I think Hi. I need to, Alan, one second. I think I need to read this paragraph to make it legit oh, first. Okay. Hang on. Pursuant to the Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 <coughs> order imposing limitation on other people that may gather in one location, this meeting will be con conducted by a remote participation, specific information such as instruction guideline for remote participation by members of the public party with right or required to end this meeting can be found on the PEN website. <clears throat> for the public portion, the meeting members of the public who wish to wish to listen to the participation may may do so in the following manner. And we will put, we will put it on the uh, town's YouTube page as soon as we are able. Thank you. All right, at this point, we'll turn it over to Tim. And does everybody, did everybody get the master plan that was sent out this afternoon? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Aha, okay, yeah, because I've got two, two Zoom devices going on, don't ask. I went to turn it on at 445. My computer decided it wanted to reconfigure itself. So besides almost throwing it out the window, I've, I've come <laughs> up with another system here and it seems like it's working, hopefully. So um, thanks for taking the time to meet with me. Thank you for inviting me. I'd love to talk about this stuff. So uh, I'm excited to, uh, to you know, take a few minutes and show you where we are with this process for, for Bass River. Um, I'm assuming you can see my shared screen with the original master plan that was included with the effluent summary what, from this past spring. And right. so that's just, that's just updating you like that's where we came from as a building block for the plan that you just received this afternoon from Scott. You can see there's some lines on there, you know, basically it's a, uh, as we would say, a glorified routing with some notes. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't uh, show us much, but um, it does show us this with with you know and this shows more detail. So um, just quickly to go through, obviously the 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 light rendered colored uh, features are items that have changed. So if you if you I think I can zoom in a touch with this and it will regenerate quick. There we go. Okay. So you can see, you know, the routing hasn't changed. It's the same as the as the original plan that you saw in this past spring. But you can see if I if you look at the first hole, 
you can see that there's three T boxes. Uh, the first part of the fairway has a highlight that shows that it's changed. There's bunkers. Uh, there's areas that have cross hatch, which equal that they're being removed. Uh, there's center lines that show in areas that show where they've changed, especially over here on the on the left side of the property, on the northern side, with new holes five and six. So it kind of, kind of just to step back, you can see where there are new features. Uh, there are now, starting with the T's, you know, each T is getting rebuilt as part of this master plan. Um, some of them because there are brand new golf holes like 11 and 12. Uh, some of them because they need to be re-leveled and, and uh, you know, this would be, this would be maintenance items, you know, if you ask me. These are things that need to be done every, every 15 years or et cetera, depending on, on the play, like holes eight and holes four. So by, by leveling them, we might do some adjustments and that's, that's my hope too. So there's kind of some combination between not just leveling, but also rebuilding. Uh, then you get into fairway areas. You can see quite a, a, quite a bit of square footage of fairway area that's getting rehatched or is hatched with a color. Uh, there's a lot of new fairway area. A lot of it relates to, of course, this project being driven by uh, the location of 11 acres of effluent. Uh, you can see in the areas with a red square around them uh, on holes four and seven, and then holes on 18. Uh, and then on the peninsula, you can, you can see hold, holes 11, 12, and 10, these long rectangles. Uh, CDM, Smith and I went back and forth and locating these to best use for their use and for my use in, in uh, you know, in creation of this, of this master plan. So of course, by creating these effluent chamber areas, we have to dig down 12 feet, et cetera, you know, re-regrading the entire area. So um, thus that creates new, um, you know, new fairway area. Uh, and then, of course, there's bunkers in relation to that. Um, this is my first pass or second pass, I'll say. You know, I did a couple passes in creating this. Is what are the what are the strategy for these holes that we're creating? What makes them interesting to play? Right. That's really what we're we're trying to try to add some interest and visual character to this to to make it fun. Um, and then, of course, there's some new greens as part of this, and those are in this kind of uh, I'll say a paley bluish green color uh where you can see uh with holes holes four five and six new hole 17 obviously holes 11 and 12. Uh, so there's six new green complexes i'll say and then the rest of them are existing greens that we're using like 14 and 13 obviously seven and eight and nine I'm trying to maximize that as much as possible because green construction is the most pricely item that we can do I will add um, there's there's also the element of the short game area, which is just to the north of the ninth hole. Uh, so that includes a couple greens, um, you know, some of that detail of how we actually build those and the cost of those, you know, will come later. But that's that shows that feature. Um, you know, it really, a lot of this, what was driving the master plan besides the effluent is of course, improving safety and pace of play and, and movement of play, circulation of golfers. So by shifting one, uh, basically making it almost a new second hole, right? Using the second green complex in the second landing area. Uh, we're doing that. We're starting the routing on, on this side and working ourselves around and of course, most importantly, um, trying to eliminate the slice sli side action the play from the current sixth hole, which is over here, and moving that so that they're, the balls are not going uh, over the road or over the, uh, over the next series of houses, as I've been told. Uh, so we flipped those two holes around. This is the same as what's on the, the original master plan. Now we're just showing you some character and some, some style to what the holes would look like. And then two more quick things, because I'll just keep talking for an hour and, and you guys will be going crazy. Uh, on the fifth hole, we needed to locate uh, a wastewater pumping station. So you can see here on five and six, there's two rectangles with a cross. Those are alternate areas where we're looking at locating that. And of course, 
those are very much visually at play. Uh, and so what that looks like and how that works with the golf hole is important. So that's for further discussion. And then the other area of, of discussion, and actually I can, I can show you a, a highlight of some of this, um, hang on, is right here. I'm assuming you can see that, is obviously part of this is a new clubhouse. And we've located a clubhouse area in the same vicinity as the existing clubhouse. And, and, and of course, that's while that's separate from the effluent project, separate from, separate from the master plan project, what a great time to be able to, you know, a tackle a project like that when the course is closed for a seri for a amount of time. It also allows you to expand on the idea of having function space and um, I would say making a profitable, you know, clubhouse area. And of course, you all know or are probably aware of that you don't have enough parking spots or stalls, as we like to say, um, for the current parking, for the current golf course, excuse me, never mind whether you have a function area. So this is a quick initial plan, master plan level of how we're adding parking. You can see how the road and et cetera has realigned. There's still a good buffer from the neighbor's housing. Uh, and it shows, you know, I'm at 218 parking spots at this point. So, which is what we're after. Um, and then quickly to go back, if I can, as soon as I figure out how to, right. So um, also on the right side of the plan, you'll see here a disturbance chart, which gives you a better idea of, of the, the holes, whether we're creating new tees or leveling them, the ferry area that's being, uh, being used. So we're like on number eight, we're maintaining 100% of the existing um, ferry area or versus number 12, we're starting from scratch, right? Um, the holes that have chambers on them and whether the green is being new or it's existing. And then there's a booker schedule, of course, because that what's what was originally driving this project along with safety and circulation was uh, bunker renovation. When we did Bayberry Hills, we wanted to renovate the bunkers to make them uh, better visible, more more interesting to look at, uh, and of course, better and easier for Scott to maintain, which I think we've done that. Uh, and so that would be part of what's driving the Bass River plan as well, and the master plan. And so this kind of gives you an idea of the bunkers we're starting with, if we're eliminating, rebuilding, or adding new. And some of this can be obviously up for discussion you know, and we'll see how we go through as we go through the project. And then the last thing never to be forgotten is, and I'll move this over, I think you can see it, is the scorecard. You can see the existing scorecard on the left side with four uh, courses, as we'd like to say. And then the proposed card with the, with the holes highlighted where they're new ones. Uh, and we now have three courses, a blue, white, and a red. Given the distance to the card, uh, separation, the yardage in between the courses. So I hope that helps give you an idea of where we are. Um, and I'm happy to, now that I've gone on and on, uh, happy to, uh, to answer questions. Well, Tim, I'm, uh, I'm a little confused on, so you said we have three courses now. Yes, well, that's that's the way we like to, to target this. When we look at scorecards, really, there's a, there's a blue course, there's a white course, right? Now we're going to a blue course, a white course, and a red course. There wasn't enough separation between, I felt, not enough separation between the yardages to have four. If you look at the existing, the silver is 5,100 and the red is, is 49. Um, I thought that it would be better to have a white at 56 and a red at 49, that's basically about, about right, so that there's there's a good play level in between them, a good yardage separation between. Okay. It's easy to add another one back into it if we if we wanted to, but I wanted to simplify the markers in relation to the square footage and the T area that you have. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the only question I would have on that is certainly the USGA has been encouraging courses to um, provide a shorter version course uh, for young, uh, for less accomplished players, for, um, and, or I should not even less accomplished, but sort of for the player that has that 140 yard drive. And they, and they're recommending a 4,200 yard course for that. 
Yes, I, I would agree. I think that's that's great. Um, a lot of courses will call them uh, family tees or, or family markers, and there's a there would be a disc located out into the fairway. Uh, often that's the case because the distance change. Um, I think we can absolutely do that. If we want to include that on the card, then then please let's do that. The, other, the only other one that sort of popped out at me was the placement of the tee box on number five, um, which is, it sort of has it stuck in the corner uh, with uh, High Bank and um, I forgot the name of that road, Salt Box, Salt Box Road. And if it's, you know, obviously there's uh, the errant tee shot or the errant uh, fairway shot would uh, could make for some interesting uh, ball flights. <laughs> So that was the only one that I saw potentially there would need be some uh, uh, barriers or fencing that might need to be tucked into that corner. Yeah, yeah. And, and I will fully admit that the fifth and sixth holes, these are challenging. This is one of the more challenging golf oh, design yeah. <laughs> assignments that I've had. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I say this and I've told Scott, and you've probably heard me say it before, we've taken, and the goal is to take the safety away from High Bank Road and put it within the golf course. So, right. you know, you can see six tees, you know how a lot of people play. Um, you actually can see a black line on here that I'm showing and I'm kind of hinting at, you know, without labeling it and calling out a lot of attention to it, we might need some netting on there. And maybe there's a tree in front of here that helps helps block that view and helps again knock down trees. Oh, excuse me, golf balls. So, so there's further discussion on this. Uh, but I really feel that as far as keeping golf balls away from High Bank Road, and um, this is the best alignment that we can come up with. There's some good separation. As you know, three out of four players hit it to the right. Um, so, so this will really help us. Yeah, I, I agree with the, the it is, a, it's a huge help. Yeah, so that, but that, that one little corner caught my eye when I, cause I, when I walked past that corner, <laughs> I, you know, the, uh, it's also the, uh, I'll call the, the touristas who love to yell at you right at that point. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's. And, and, Go ahead. Sorry. That that yeah, that placement is sort of akin to some of the situations that exist now, where you have tee boxes that are, um, you know, or or greens that are you know directly in in line with play from another hole. There, there's a you know a number of places on the existing layout where that happens, and this. This is kind of an even more obvious one, but like you say, I don't know what else you can do here. <laughs> Tim, if I may a little bit. Um, yeah, go ahead, Scott. It's, I agree here with Tim. This is, and I agree with you, Ted, uh, on the old OUL or what it exists today. There's a lot of that going on. This is more of a one-off situation in this corner, but it helps take care of the other problem and, and if Tim's right we get to put the net up that's a you know one thing we need to do in that certain area to to help out but this will drastically reduce the amount of problems we have going the other way that's kind of what we're after in that that situation over there yeah it, except that the the line from the from the T here leads straight into this T over here granted you're going to want people going this way but a lot of, you know, that's, that's right in line with a push from the tee, and you can't put the net down here. Right. No, I know what you're saying, Ted. It's just some of this also, like, as we get into it, we might be able to solve a little more as the earth moving is going on. Tim can probably hit on that a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you, Scott, for that, uh, for that reminder. Um, as you, you can see on display, especially this closer, closer view, you can see that plus 12 or minus six and plus six. I'm kind of making my first pass at, you know, I want to take the elevation change, the flatness out of this course as much as I can. We've got the opportunity to have earthwork with equipment on site, heavy earthwork equipment to do the chamber work. So and we're going to have excess fill as part of that part of the project. So 
so working on five and six is is a big part of that and having some some softness in the grade uh having some uh over here taking the the, the swale out of it i'll say in the beginning part um and also you know creating some mounding some diversion uh fescue areas that will help keep uh players and people you know the ball separated as much as we can Jim, so this fifth hole now will is be be playing the opposite direction of the hole that's in that location now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I and I think the right. I mean, you're exactly right. You can see um, as much as I love having the aerial underneath this because you can see the current sixth hole. Uh, the red line is this current center line of play, right. and how that how that connects and flows. The the new fifth is literally going to go down the tree line. That's my idea of the center line. So that gives us some good separation. Is it ideal? No, uh, but it's as good a separation as we could get uh, for getting the fifth hole off to the, you know, to the right side. So we play the fifth hole now in an easterly direction. When we get to the green, we then have to turn around and walk back the length of the hole to the six T. Yeah, you can see the six T's are here, right? And so yeah, you're going to go right. past this, past this pump station, and come around here to the corner, and I and. Um, you know, again, this located, is challenging. And where is the T located for the sixth hole? Where the number six is? Uh, no, right yeah, here. Right here. See, see where my oh, cursor right is? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. So that kind of, um, I'll call it neon green for a lack of better terms. Uh, that's the, those are the new T's, and you can see the new T's here on six. So okay. back down to the corner. Can you, can you sort of orient those new T's there where you have your cursor right now to to face the a little bit to sort of cant them a little bit more to the left so they don't point directly almost directly at the sixth T. I I can and I've I've and if you can see you can uh, let me see if I can zoom in just a touch more um, there because the, the center line's not as dark on this as I'd like it to be. For the new proposed center line, see that dark black line? Right. It goes right here. So that's the center line. You can see the T's follow the alignment, the orientation of the center line. So I'm aiming you. And this is and this is pretty much the same. Even if you go over to number two here, you can see where there's the center line. And then the T's follow that alignment from each T. So I'm trying to follow that alignment. I, I would... I hesitate to align them left because that means players will tend to follow the alignment yeah, and they'll, they'll the start street. low left. Yeah, yeah it, again, this is really challenging. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at a brighter spot um, or, or a positive thing to talk about for number five, um, maybe some of you would identify which famous golf hole this one is emulating. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's on the West Coast that they do play a PGA Tour event there. Oh, this, and it's in. This is not Spyglass. No, which hole is that? No, and it's in, I'll say Southern California. Okay. San Diego. Uh, I got to go north. Pebble Beach. The Torrey Pines. I got to go back down south. Um, just, just north of Santa Monica. <laughs> Come on, give us the clue. Half Moon Riviera. Bay. Riviera. Is it the tenth hole at Riviera. Are you gonna? You're all gonna have to Google that. So if you flip it around, side, you know, orient it the other direction, and and uh, change the angle slightly, it's um, reminiscent of the the tenth at Riviera. One of my favorite holes. <laughs> Hey, Tim, this is Chris Hansen. Where's the uh, sixth green? I'm kind of struggling to find. Oh, OK. And then where's the second green? The second green is the existing second green. Oh, OK. Yeah. So this this is a this is a busy area. You've got green, green, you know, new, new green for four, uh, new green for six. Uh, there, there's some activity here and just player circulation is a challenge you know you don't want to take them to the to the right side of number six because then you're in play off of five uh we've got you know coming into play here to go to set from six to seven you're going by uh by number four green uh, you know so it's it's um it's going to be a busy area
but I'd like to say some of the other areas will offset that. Uh -oh. I like it. I mean, I, I think that the, the devil's in the details, right? I mean, uh, the, the key is one of the things is that the, to preserve sort of the playability of the course, but to make it, you know, uniquely challenging. Right. Well, you've also included some longer par fours instead yes. of, you know. Yeah, I mean, 17 looks like it's going to be a, or sorry, whatever, uh, whatever the five is that turned into a four, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, there's a couple of those. So I, are, you, are, you main, are you maintaining the, um, all, all the new um, greens? Uh, as Donna Ross style? Well, that, that's a great question. And, and I think it's good segue from what, what they were just talking about is that, you know, to me, and of course, Donna Ross used to say this, the strength of the golf course is in par fours. So um, I like to have a good, you know, breadth of, of par fours. You know, you start with number five, that's drivable for a lot of people. Um, or at least they're worth we're getting them to think about it at some level, right? Um, and then you're going to have you know some longer holes that really are going to make you think about how am I getting there? Like number th number three, right? Um, and it, you know how am I how am I you know 430 yards, right? Uh, you know that, that's a as we'd say a nut buster, uh, especially depending on which direction the wind's blowing. If it's coming out of the out of the southwest, as what's typical, you know, which is it's, which is why we like to say, you know, par is a number. Um, we look at it as sometimes they're two and a half pars. Maybe number six is a birdie hole. Some uh, a three and a half par. Maybe maybe five is a birdie hole. But then you have four and a half pars, which is which is maybe number three, uh, or a reachable par five. And then you have, of course, a four a five a five point five par, which is something that's like, yeah, it's a good three shot hole. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a, you know, the real good yardage to create that. Um, you know, we'll do our best on, on number 11, particularly and number four, uh, but they're, they're still going to be shorter for especially the longer hitter. Is this something that's available on the website or is it, uh, was it attached to the note the meeting invite or where could we get a copy of this if we wanted to noodle on it a little bit? It was, uh, it was distributed via email to everybody. Okay. Yeah. I'll pick it up there. Thanks. You're, you're literally the first to see it. I think Scott, you know, we've gone back and forth a few times and CDM has it and we've gone back and forth, but nobody else has, uh, has seen the entire plan. Yeah. We're just not, Chris, we're just not at that point of a uh, public knowledge yet. It, it's good for you guys to see it. And then I'll go back to CDM Smith and stuff and until they can put it out is, is really what we're going by. No worries. Chris, it was sent out as an email to members at 2.43 uh, this afternoon. So it, it's it's in your current uh, emails, your newer emails. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, and when you look at it as a PDF, you can you can zoom in on it so that it, you know, it's, it's a little easier to figure out what's going yeah. on. Well, Tim, whatever you can do with the what, what I call the old back nine at Bass River is going to be an improvement. Uh, it was never the strong point of Bass River anyway, so I'm, I'm sure it will help out tremendously. I, I think you'll uh, you'll find these holes uh, enticing. Uh, they might they might start. I want you to think when you're standing on the tee, um, and that and then getting back to the comment of, from you know Donald Ross, and I'll say all the old architects, they really put a lot of emphasis on you know not just standing up there and whacking it as far as you can. Uh, you know, thinking about where I'm placing the golf ball, I'm hitting shots. I want you to hit it right to left, left to right, you know, as much as you can, but then give the opportunity for other players, whether they're shorter or less accomplished to say, Hey, hey I can miss it here and I can get it to roll on and move from left to right, just by hitting it on the ground. That in his greens and his undulating greens. Yes. Yes. This, and one thing we we uh, and I kind of sidestepped and and, um, and it doesn't show on here as much as as I would like, um, but and I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit, especially over towards uh, nine and eight. Um, you can see a line drawn around here and a kind of a 
uh, dash log dash dot dash size. Right. So we've gone back and forth, uh, Scott and I, and talking about what's the character of the course. And, and you know, we know we have very well drained sandy soils, and we want to have some visual separation between the holes and places. Um, and so what, what does that mean? And so this, this is defining a native area. And the native area would be more grass, not necessarily, um, I'll say, like the uh, 12th at, at Bayberry Hills, right? It's, it's something that's got more grass to it, but it, it's, and it's gonna be very, very <coughs> coarse, but playable. Um, I would say it would be maybe something you'd more similar to see at like Chambers Bay or something like that. So uh, where it's got, you know, definitely some fescue, but some open areas where you can find the golf ball. I think it looks very nice. Hey, Tim, if you could just touch on the, uh, the short game area that was created, uh, practice is not the best thing we got going on over there. So that might help help out we got going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, happy to, and, and I and I do love my short game areas. I've done three of them in the last few years, and, and they seem to be a hot topic with with a lot of uh, clubs and and even municipalities. Um, the existing tenth hole is is right here. You can see the existing. Actually, the back tee gets eliminated as part of the chamber work and et cetera. And of course, the change for the new first tees. And then we have this nice cart path that flows and connects over to here, so you can have a couple different greens. These are, you know, three thousand square feet probably at the biggest. I've I've saved the existing green because actually I think it has some interesting character as. As a short game area green, you know, so you have some new bunkers to play from, some of them get eliminated. Uh, and then, of course, short grass to so that you can have um, alternate people playing different distances. We're trying to do 20, 30, 40 yard shots, not 100 yard shots. Um, and so that a couple people could chip, putt, hit, you know, from different directions in the same, using the same style. These are gonna be grasped with the same species. These are gonna be maintained the same way. So you can really practice the ebb and flow of the ground game, you know, uh, before, before playing the Bass River, but also, you know, for playing anywhere, really. Now, I, I, as a, I don't know how you charge for that as a municipality and how you get, you know, do you, do you ask people to chip in five bucks or do you add, add 50 cents or 25 cents to a round to offset the cost? Cause there's definitely maintenance to this, uh, you know, it's area wise and effort wise, it's at least a golf hole, I would say. Uh, but, you know, you all play or have, you know, so you understand the value of having a short game and, and, you know, at least for me, often three out of five shots are around the greens. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of value in, in uh, this type of practice. Yeah, well, it's something we don't have right now. Over at, over at Bayberry, you have the driving range, and there is a practice hole, a short game hole, but it's really, it's really just for practicing, you know, sand shots and maybe a little bit of really short chip shots. Other than that, we don't have the, this kind of practice area. There, there is the practice green at Bass River, but I don't know. It always seemed like a suicidal place to practice golf to me with people coming down, the, uh, you know, from that tee box uh, yeah. by there. Uh, was not a place I wanted to stand around practicing golf. Yeah. Tim, can you talk about 18 a little bit as a finishing hole and sort of share your vision there? Yeah, I can. I, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, besides the idea of, of uh, coming back and being right at the clubhouse and so um, that, you know, we've kind of hinted at, I don't do vertical architecture, but um, I hint at the idea that the pro shop is here and, and we can see one and we can see 18 and so it's easy to manage the flow of, of golfers right um and so that's that's the primary reason there and of course we had a green to reuse um but you know being able to reuse that fairway and add some character to it you know emphasizing that kind of right to left tee shot off the off the tee and then and then switching 
switching around the bunkering a little bit, you know, having minimizing the the areas where you have um, cart traffic, golfer circulation, trying to get on the green surface, but emphasizing that, you know, if you do hit it on this left side, you know, you've got, you've got the ability to use the terrain and work it up into the green without having to fight with a bunker. So that's, that's my, uh, that's my first pass at 18. All right. And, and I will say, you know, there's, with it, with some would say maybe there's some extra bunkering out there, but I I think it helps guide the, guide the players. You know, it's it's always like we say, you know, it's like the windows that um, on the on the uh, on the uh, the attic roof. You know, nobody ever looks at them, but it, they make the hole, they make the they make the house look proportionate, make it look correct. So by having bunkers out here that reinforce that right to left motion, they sit on a high spot. They kind of shift your eye. They also might attract some of the longer players that think they're going to dominate the course. You know, you can see there's a hundred yard marker right here, right where my cursor is. And there just conveniently has to be a bunker here because some people might say, hey, I'm going to hit it, you know, 285 and I'm going to get it right in here. Well, now I'm making you think about it a little bit too. Yeah. So it's good. I like that. It's kind of interesting to come full circle. You know, 12 used to be, what was it? nine and before that it was 18 so now it's 18 again yeah right right yeah. and i i'd love to push the yardage more i just in in places you know i, I might be able to do it like in, in front of us with 16 but we still have you know the current 18th the 15th hole right here and so i i'm trying to keep safety um as a main component as much as i can we're pushing the the boundaries the buffers you know, way more than we would on a normal new golf course. But, you know, this is an old golf course. Uh, yeah, you know, whether Donald Ross was there or not, we're, we're talking about a course that's from, you know, the golden age. They didn't have 225 foot buffers between holes. That's not the nature, the, the, the characteristic of the course. So while we've well within that range, that buffer, um, it's going to have that old character to it. Um, I would love to be able to have spots where you walk off a green and have a mode area right to a tee. Uh, you know, maybe we get to that as we're moving through it, at the, you know. To know the details. question for me, on, both on 16 and 18, it looks as if you have to drive over some, uh, some rough or some unmaintained areas before you hit a fairway. Is that correct? Right, right. So just because it's showing as aerial, it, it doesn't mean that it's native area. Um, I, I'm very sensitive about that, especially for T players and their ability to reach the fairway. Well, um, that, that was my question. I'm thinking about forward T players or even back team players that don't reach it, how that's going to affect the pace of play if they lose it in a rough area. Right, right. I, I agree entirely. So this is mode rough. This would not change from what it is now. We would move the cart path so it's not um, a visual element in the golf hole and, and shift it up here on the, on the probably on the left or maybe, you know, maybe we go on the right. This entire hole gets rebuilt as part of it. It's one of those that I'd love to try to try to work on. And you can see the hints at some of the grading so that we create some kind of terraces or plateaus. For, for the golf ball to land and get to um, as a first pass. And so we kind of get an idea of where we're going with, with um, you know, with this stuff. Do you have an idea on the distance from the forward tee to the fairway on 16 and 18? They're all going to be about no less than 75 yards to the beginning of the fairway. All That's right. one of those kind of magic numbers. Okay, good. And what about 18? Is that mode rough also to the first cut of the fairway? The uh, well, 18 is not. And, and actually, I'm, I'm wondering where that green, I know where the green line came from, but it's not supposed to be on this drawing. But you can see the black line, and it kind of moves in kind of sinewy form all the way through here. So 18, I'm assuming you're all warmed up and you can hit the ball now, uh, that you've going to have to cross some fescue area. And how, you know, what, what does that actually look like when we get to it? Or, you know, do we get Scott to mow this back just a touch in here, or et cetera, so that's a little bit of rough here. But um, there's going to be a few holes where you're going to have to hit it over the, over the, uh, the native area. 
And, I, and you can see that on one, I'm kind of, maybe I've drawn it a little too far to the west out here, but the idea that that first shot, you're kind of, you know, we're introducing you to Bass River. It's a, it's a new golf course. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you think about the game a little bit more. Um, and my, you know, and my thought was solely on pace of play on uh, players that, that can't keep it in the air for 150 yards, you know? I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, and I agree. And so that's why this is a master plan. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe this gets cut back a little bit here. Maybe it's even just just parallel with these with this main T complex. Again, a lot of people are playing from 6,000 yards and, and right in here. So that that you could see with the tees, you know, it's not much of a carry. To give you. If this is 75, I'm talking about 125 yards, you know, to get to here. Right. Andy, to touch on that a little bit, Tim and I have been going back and forth a lot. We're actually talking about the concept of possibly doing a lot more fairway space and reducing the amount of rough out there, you know, just to, to help things out with pace play such as that and uh, to help us out maintenance wise. You know, rough is a tremendous maintenance nightmare. And Tim can elaborate a little bit on that. Okay, very good. Thank, thanks, Scott. And the other thing I like that Tim said was, both on 16 and 18, uh, it's something that you could take care of by mowing either the fescue or the or the, uh, for the the rough down to uh, you know three inches, right. and then people could hit out of it. There's there's definitely going to be some give and takes once it's like fully open, and then you know we we might oh, yeah. have to do some different angles at that point with mow patterns and stuff like that. Right. Thank you. Can you, uh, this is Chris again, can you comment at all on how much new uh, roadway is going to have to be put in for cart paths? Uh, that's probably a, a pretty big expense for this project, right, for paving. Yeah, yeah. And, and I will say CDM and uh, Smith and I are going back and forth on the, on the master plan cost estimate at this point, and that's forthcoming. Um, I'm assuming in the next, obviously the next week or two. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually waiting for their response on that. So, yes, there's there's a fair amount of, of new cart path work. Um, and I, on a project like this, um, you know, some of this gets saved, some of it we could reuse, but there's, there's a lot of it that's going to be redone. Um, I'm not proposing wall-to-wall -wall cart path. I think that the soil conditions out there and what we're going to create with these new turf species that we're able to use starting from scratch, especially up here with these new holes that you're going to be able to get the carts out, you know, almost all the time, if not all the time on, you know, on Bass River. Okay. Another question, Tim, regarding the cart paths. Um, I don't know what problems Scott goes through with the maintenance of the shell paths up at Bayberry. But being right here on the river, uh, and if you're putting in new cart paths, you can, give it, you can properly prepare the substrata. I would think that shell cart paths might be a way to go, especially since we've torn out a lot of asphalt cart paths over at Bayberry. Has that, have you had given, given any consideration to shell cart paths with the proper uh, substrata, you know, sub base preparation? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done that before. Um, we haven't got to that level of, of design, I'll say. Obviously, I think the seashells fits the characteristic of the site. Um, I think the key is, is to be able to build them um, even, you know, we're still going to build them the same way because they've got to hold equipment and cart. So the base material is still the same, but then to be able to uh, minimize Scott's input into having to move them around, rake them, re-leveling them, there's right. probably some additive that we would have to, an emulsion, almost like asphalt, that there's a lot of materials that we're using now at different platforms that allow us to get a firm surface so that you still have that crunchy uh, visual and the sound as you're driving across it, but Scott's not going to have to rake it, re-roll it. Uh, three times a year. Yeah, I, I put in a shell driveway at my home, and there were I had choices of crushed uh, concrete or crushed asphalt. I went the I went with a with a sub base base of about eight inches of crushed concrete, compacted, but not compacted too hard to leave it water permeable. Then I put on the layers of shell on top, and it's lasted tremendously well. Yeah, yeah. But like yeah, anything so else, it's the preparation the that. that that makes it last. Right.
Do you add a little bit of shells every year or every other year, just scattering some? Uh, only, probably no more than every four years. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. All right, we'll take migrate. that detail. If you put it correctly, they don't migrate. So all you do is rake them back if you have to. Right, right. They never right. disappear. Right, I, and I agree. And, and a lot of it is is uh, the use too as well. Um, I, I know yeah. I can imagine your driveway is fairly busy, but <laughs> it may not be as busy. Well, no, it's not <laughs> a secondary the... driveway. It's more for looks on the cake, but uh, right. it works well. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So I, I think that's a, an effort. We may have to do a, a test, uh, you know, installation at a spot to make sure we're doing something that works. And of course, fits the budget too. Yes, I, I think this is great. And this is a great first proposal. I think we need to soon move on and then uh, I assume we will get the costing of this in the next few weeks. Yes. Yes, I mean it. It uh, you've seen the preliminary cost or the first pass at a cost that was part of the effluent summary produced by CDM. So um, you know we've not doubled it, but we have gone up, and um, and a lot of it. I hate to say, uh, I'm going to place the blame on COVID. Um, I'm sure you're seeing it in your lines of work. Um, it has affected labor, materials, delivery uh, across the board. Um, so we're we're factoring that in. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Last, last question, Tim, I, for me. Uh, do you uh, are there any considerations that need to be met in terms of uh, officially certifying the course for USGA purposes or agronomy purposes? You, you'll have, uh, and I'm, I'll probably ask Scott on this too as well. I mean, you'll have to have uh, the course re-rated re uh, for handicap purposes. That's for sure. Um, Outside of that, I'm, I'm, I can't think of anything, Scott. Uh, Chris, let me, yeah, dive in there a little bit. It gets, we re-rate them every so often anyways with the MGA just to stay compliant. You know, you don't want to fall out of it. We did pay very uh, last year to, with the update. And then anytime you want, anytime you do any kind of change, you always want to re-rate it to stay, to stay current. But it fits the, what is it, par 70. So we fit every USGA recommendation and the MDA takes it from there. Thank you. But they, they would come out, you know, as soon as it's done really before we open and rate it. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you, Ellen. We look Thank forward you, to your next presentation. Chris, happy, happy another year. And I hope to see you guys talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Thank time. you. Bye. Um, all right, let's get back on schedule for a second. And has everybody had a chance to review the minutes from the last meeting? Yes, I have. All right, all the, someone second accepting those minutes? Second. Vote. Um, Hi. Andy? Yes. Hi. Bev? Hi. You shouldn't sound like Bev. That was Ted. Oh. <laughs> Ted and Bev. Oh, I thought she said Ted. All right, Bev? Have we lost Bev? I think we've lost Oh, here she is. All right. Yes. Yes? Yes. Um, Richard? Yes. Ted? Yes. Chris. Yes. And I also vote. Yes. All right. Uh, we talked about the membership guide handbook discussion. Any further discussion on that? I know we had. Are we talking about the that that thing that I wrote and sent around to everybody to look yes. at? Yes. Yes. For the acceptance of the, did everyone have a chance to look at that? that no, yes. That would be a yes. <laughs> I also just sent you guys a, an updated copy of everything we're working on to, to get it more into 2021, if you will. We've been using that same guide for a while, so this one's a little more updated. 
we got a few more things to add to it. Once it's fully done, we'll set it around again. Okay, then we should probably wait until we see the updated one before we vote on yep. anything. Acceptance. Okay. All right, let's move right on to the director's report. All right. <clears throat> so we are still open at Bass River. Looks like the polar vortex is coming in a couple weeks. So get your golf in before it gets too cold and snowy. Um, we've had some really busy days over there. People are still golfing. It's good for us. Uh, it keeps us busy. keeps everybody happy with the golf course open. A couple of things I wanted to touch on is that Bayberry is closed, and we did have seen some use, if you will, of people trying to play over there. We get some people off the drive range, practice areas um, are getting – Pretty good use, surprisingly, this year. But um, just if if you do see it, um, let me know. And so we are telling them to go to Bass River. We don't really want to encourage that right now. A uh, couple of big things is that we are going in front of viewing tomorrow, but we did extend the membership all the way through through March, and that's the new thing going forward. So it'll be April first to March thirty first going forward. Um, RFP, uh, we're in the last, well, the third one now that we're doing. We had three vendors. We chose to evaluate two of them. We did one interview last week, another one this week, and then we'll reconvene to recommend a vendor and hopefully start the contract February 1st. Uh, for course conditions, uh, we've had a lot of maintenance guys out on vacation uh, using some time up, which is good. Didn't get a whole lot done in the month of December, but we're, we're – we did work on the tee box over at Bass River. That's part of Tim's actually master plan that you saw. Um, if you've been over there, that's that new tee box is, is part of his plan, so that's good. Uh, we are also working on the driving range at Bayberry. We dug it up, getting ready for concrete, and we will then install a, a tee line mat, which is just like putting a tee in the ground. It's more like grass-like for us to shut the tees down a little more often so we can actually grow grass on the driving range tees. So those are our two big focuses right now. Once we wrap up both of those, we'll move into tree removal, which we start with the dead trees, and then we work out from there. And then I just want to highlight that uh, my mechanic and, and his assistant are very busy getting the equipment ready for next year. They're doing a tremendous job in the shop. Um, as far as the POS update, uh, we got a little tied up. I'm, I'm sure that everybody's kind of aware that uh, we lost a staff member at this point. Um, so we're a little bit down, but we are moving forward with them, uh, with Club Profit, getting everything organized. We will have it up and running as soon as memberships are approved to be fully ready to go. Did we lose? I'm sorry, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, Keith is no longer uh, with us at this point. Okay. So we he was a big part of this part, so we, we're just kind of man down right now. So we're moving forward. We got a couple bodies on it, and Club Profit really going head front on it, so um the have, newsletter have was figured a big out hit. how to address the um uh, replacing the the only part of chelsea that worked the lottery system yeah or... we're actually uh that's a good question Dan. we actually are in talks with them to possibly keep the t-state for that for this season um but that's uh in a familiar talks with them to see if we can pull that off right now we should have an answer by the end of this week um that would be a big help to us, actually, because we don't have to train our membership core as much as for the new system. But that, like I said, that is the only good feature of Chelsea is the T-sheet, but that would be uploaded into Club Profit, and we wouldn't have any Chelsea member tea times would be just on the back end. You guys would book the same way. They would come to us through Club Profit. So we would then have to pay for an annual dues for Chelsea and Club Profit or not? Nope. We would just pay club profit. We might have a little more percentage to it, but we would just play club profit. Okay. So essentially, they they would. Um, they this would... is only this is if they can do it. If they were if Chelsea's willing to work with with club profit on this, they've had partnerships in the past, and I'm sure they're still doing it. But if they're willing to do it, then they would contract out club Chelsea from them, and we would just pay club profit. Okay. So everything us everything we do still goes only to club profit. Uh, yeah, because I wouldn't be looking forward to trying to train uh, a lot of golfers who, A, aren't here and 
B, hear rumor after rumor and um, and trying trying to put something out in writing to get people to read and follow the instructions for. Right. Um, we're working on it. We're, we're seeing if we can pull this off. Uh, this would be a very easy thing for us at this point. Well, if it good. did come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. If they can exchange the data and just fit it, take the data from Chelsea and slide it into the, the club profit database, it, it would be fine. Right. They are also, uh, we met with them late last week. They are also working on their own kind of version of a lottery as well. And they think they'll have it up by next year. So this is more just a stopgap measure until we get to that point. Okay, that sounds good. So, I'll, I like. I think I have a call with them tomorrow, and we'll we'll continue this conversation with them. Um, just go further. Uh, I got some great response on the newsletter. I'm not sure what you guys got, but people really liked it. Um, and we are planning another one right as soon as the fees are formally set we'll we'll hit the send button it will be ready to go by then and then we'll send another one out so if you guys want something added to that please send it to me uh Somebody send me a copy of the newsletter i don't think i have i'm not on the distribution list for that message yeah we'll send it off chris thank you i'll try to add you to the list too i'll get you on there thank you bam are you still haven't did you get the newsletter Um, but yeah, it was a no. If, if, <laughs> God, I didn't get it either. So, you know, I don't know if it got to, to everybody. So, okay, we're, we'll work it out. We'll sort out the issues. It was the first big blast with the, uh, the new system. So, um, <clears throat> oh, that, yeah. So, if you do have something, I'll get it to me soon and we'll, we'll get something draft form and we'll send it your way and then we'll send it out. Uh, the hearing, as I mentioned, is scheduled tomorrow. We go to the first one. It is required to go to two, so we have the second one's on the 26th. And then once everything's formalized, we we can then start selling the membership. Uh, just to touch on the, the Munis report, which I sent to you guys as well. Um, still doing really well. If you, there's a slight dip, but that's just maybe based on membership because we haven't sold any this yet. This year we did do a little bit in December last year, but all that will get made up as soon as we start the membership. But everything else looks really good. Spexes are down slightly, which is good, and and everything else looks great for us. I can answer any questions that you guys got. Yeah, Scott, what's the um what's the situation with the roof? The roof is uh, in DBW is helping us out with that to put the scope of services out. And that should be out end of the week. And once it's out, I think it has to be on the street in two weeks, and then we can get somebody in there to fix it. All right. And the truck? The truck is approved, and similar thing. I got to get the the right information from DPW on that, and then we can go and purchase the truck. Excellent. But both those funding sources have been approved for us to to do what we need to do. Okay. Anybody have any questions, to Scott? Uh, related to the roof, uh, will they also be able to do, as part of that scope of work, will they include some of the siding repairs? Uh, the scope of service for the roof is just anything above the line of the roof right now and up. So we can't do anything down at this point that was not approved. Okay. So any, any single work and everything and windows and stuff, we'll, we'll plan on getting another scope together, finding out uh, the amount of money it takes, and we'll go to fall town meeting to get the money approved for that. I do have a question that's probably more difficult about than uh, answering something about a roof. I'm sorry to hear we lost Keith. Um, do you have any prospects to replace him uh, for this upcoming year or, or, or do you have working on that? I mean, I think he was a great asset over there. Yeah, he was, it, you know, it, it was a uh, Tough situation, but we need to move forward. And yeah, we put the job back out and advertised it next day or so. I think it closes and we'll look to see what we got for responses and we'll, we'll move forward from there. But I think there are a few people, if I'm uh, saying that right from HR, responded to the job. So we'll see what we, we got out of it. Okay, good. Thank you. But we will continue to, to rebuild the thing when people leave. It's, it's on 
golf course has been here for 120 years. We got to keep yeah, going. It's just... <laughs> losing people is part of business. I think they're harder to replace than structures. So, you know, right. Okay. So is this in addition to the, uh, the golf pro role that you have, or do you have multiple recs open now? Uh, the only job, well, we had one, we had a tech three position and maintenance open. We filled that. And then we have this current position open right now. Um, the pro job goes in front of person in and in, in February, once that approved, we'll, put that through too. So okay. there'll be a lot of moving parts in the next month or two. Sounds like it. Got to go through all the steps. So it takes some time. Yeah, I know it's not easy. It's <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it shows up in the financial reports. Uh, certainly the year to date uh, full-time staff uh, is, is well below uh, right. at prior years. Um, I did notice, uh, I'm looking at page two of the, um, of the uh, report, um, the uh, credit card expenses at three, almost uh, 36,000 bucks for year to date, which obviously reflects a big increase in uh, the amount of credit card sales. Is, is that at the same discount rate or is that as the discount rate gone up as well? Uh, no, our percentage rate didn't go up. Uh, that's really just cost of doing business this year, being credit card only. Right. I mean, we were a lot busier than years past due with COVID, as everybody knows, and then as a way to try to keep people safe, just like everybody else, we, we yeah. made some decisions. We thought credit card only was the best way to go. So that's yeah. Yeah, that one right there, that expense you just see is a cost of doing business. Yeah. No, I guess uh, when we pull looks... over to club profit, our our rate actually goes down a little bit, which is that's nice for us. Yeah, because it looks like it'll be about sixty thousand dollars higher than what was in the the budget. The budget, of course, fine. Right. I also noticed uh, under uh, a little bit further down the page, one hundred thirty thousand dollars for uh, equipment lease, which is new. Um, and I assume that that's mowing equipment. Um, yeah, so that that used to be under uh, capital. And they moved it on to a, to the lease item because it's not actually a capital expense. It's not a capital expenditure, other than it, it sort of falls in the same. And uh, I assume that that's for um, how many years does that do those leases? Does that lease generally run, or is that just sort of a composite of multiple leases? Uh, no, that one right there is what you see is our John Deere lease package, which we signed and and got delivery of in May, and that one runs for four years at that fee right there the 130,000 um, the other current leases are are little ones that are in the budget as well um, those are under the capital expenditures um, one of those expires at the end of the this year coming up and then the only two leases will have acted at that point is cart lease and this equipment lease yeah well, cart yeah, lease is on a separate item yeah uh, you know obviously you see the capital expenditure item going down and that you know reflecting that lease Right. Uh, the tea time reservation system, you had indicated at one of the sessions that it was going to be about 30, you know, 22 plus seven, about 29,000 a year. That's so correct. That, so is it, when will that kick in? Uh, we do not take club profit until they're fully up and running and we pay them once a year. And I think we decided on March as our payment. So we would expect a $29,000 payment in March. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, there was one other little one. That... It's just a lot. We could have done that monthly. It's just a lot easier for us to do it a yearly payment. Yep. Just like we do the equipment leases and the car lease. Those are both one yearly payment. Yeah. The other thing that's sort of, it's, I was just sort of, you know, quickly looking at the fringe benefit lines it was amazing to me that the fringe benefit costs continue to, I mean, they're, they're just like skyrocketing, even though your salary expense for full time is, is significantly lower. So that either implies that there's, there's no relationship between the two that you get a number from, <laughs> you get a number from our friends in town hall, uh, because you would think that it would be more like an average of about 40% of the, uh, the uh, full time expense as opposed to some random number that sort of pops up. Yeah, so uh, the when if you're looking on say page three or whatever, the BR Golf Health Medicare, those costs, all those figures are given to us by Town Hall every year. Um, 
as well as the retirement association number. Right. No. So. Are they are they lagged a year? So they look so they're basically doing stuff that was in previous years that they then do the calculations of and charge you in the current year. Yeah, so, pretty much. They, I think what they do is build up about a ten percent increase every year to it. Is that, is that what I've understood? But again, these are numbers that we keep trying to figure out the actual total sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think Rich has got a point there. If salaries are going down, how can benefits be going up so much? Yeah, even even if it's ten percent up, it should be ten percent up on a lower correct starting point. Yes. yes. If it's something that we need to question them at some point. Anybody got any other questions, concerns? Um, uh, just a quick one, Scott. Uh, when we, when will the, uh, uh, when will we have a sense of the of the size of the bid for the restaurant services for the lease? Uh, when will we know? You mean what, who we think is coming in the door? Yep. Probably uh, next week. We would know. Okay. We have the interview, I think uh, it's on Wednesday and then we'll reconvene, if not later that week, early next, and then we'll, we got to move it quickly anyways, based on the calendar. So yep. next week we should know who's coming in the door. Excellent. All right. Uh, we move the public review down to number five on the agenda. It's usually first, but I wanted to make sure that Tim didn't have to sit around. Um, and we have some prospective new members of the GEC. So I'd like to ask is anybody got any questions about how we operate, what we do, any any questions, really throw it out and we'll see what we can answer for you. I, I had a question for, uh, for Scott. Um, I, I think all of us are happy with the changing of the year from uh, January 1st to April 1st, March 31st, but I have a, a, a friend who's, who's in a quandary because he couldn't join this past year because of medical condition, but now he, he can't re-sign up and, and play winter golf because the membership hasn't been approved yet or whatever. And I, I don't know if there's some way, you know, he can make a down payment to be able to start playing before everything's finalized. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't do that. We can't sell a 21, one, 2021 pass until it's formalized. Until it's so formalized. This, so the end of so the this month. This is one of those those one-off situations where yeah. it won't happen again next year or anything. Like we we wanted to shift the calendar anyways, and this was the year to do a switching system. So we had to kind of yeah. – we gave the membership a, a three-year extension. And, yeah, three months. Right. And unfortunately, it does – for the people that want to join it, we do – we need to understand the frustration. It's just we can't actually sell it fast. But once once the fee is approved, will he be able to join then, or does he have to wait till April first? Nope. Once uh, so, say we get approval on the twenty sixth, he can come in on the twenty seventh, and we'll have him ready. Join. To go. Okay, that's great. Thank yep. you, Richard. And tell your friend that he's in the same position as a member of the Golf Enterprise Committee. <laughs> I, had, I had a Lynx membership last year, and Bayberry's closed. <laughs> I cannot play now because I can't buy a new membership yet. Yeah. It's just one of those things. We all have to live with it. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, hoping no. to buy one on the 27th, by the way. A full I, un I, underst I understand. No, nope. like I said, we're, we're all happy we're playing free for three months. <laughs> Excellent. Any other questions? Yeah, this, this is Jay Frey Frey. Scott, with a new, with a new um, annual fee, the way that what's going to work, are, is there going to be a payment plan and how would it work? And do you have a timing ideas for that or how? Uh, we're actually not preparing to do a payment plan. We're going to do, uh, we incorporate the, the credit card expense into the membership. So you can use a credit card or pay by check at this point. So uh, that's, that's the way we prefer to do it. Yes. So it'll be all one payment. at Yes. One so yeah. this year's one payment, no payment plan. Right. Correct. So that's going to be a change that probably people should be aware of. I don't know how many people we had on payment plans last year. But. Yeah, but well, we didn't really have a January. lot. Last year we didn't, we didn't allow pandemic. credit card payment either. Well, they we did. Never, it was, quite, had, it was it like a 5% interest. 
All right, all right, hold on, hold on. A lot going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't do credit cards in the past. Yeah, you know, before me there was credit cards. You had a convenience fee, which we couldn't do. We got rid of the credit cards. We brought the credit cards back. We ate the fee. We're fine with that. We're going to continue to eat the fee. There's no other fee associated with it. It's just the flat out twelve hundred if it does get approved at that that rate. And then with the pandemic last year, we went completely credit card, and we didn't do the payment plan because we couldn't couldn't do all that pull off at that time as well. So this kind of just transitions. We didn't. It's just better for us to do it this way than to to be the bank, if you will. And there's a lot of moving parts for us to make sure who's who's active, who's not. This way, you pay your active, and and we move on. Okay. With the uh, with the the uh, movement away from January first, you used to have time for a payment plan. Someone could buy a you know make the first payment in January, and you still you have three months of basically you know, not, not in season play. Now you're talking about April 1st. You're, you're talking about already being in season. There's no real time to establish a, uh, you know, a time period for, for a payment plan. So to expect a payment plan with the, um, the, you know, with the first, with April 1st being the start date, I think would be kind of unreasonable. I mean, it, the way the way I look at it is, you can can do a payment plan, but it would be using your credit card. You can do it with your own personal bank or whatever. We just don't want to be yeah. the bank, right? So, so uh, I had a couple other questions, and it's got it just kind of comes down to some of the master plan stuff, and it's all right to have asked that. Um, there's a, I know that the, the timing of building the new clubhouse at Bass River was, was around what might be done when the course is being worked on. And uh, I wasn't sure, I know you talked at one time in the past about um, I think the cart barn would be underneath the new, uh, the new barn. Is, are you planning on having that for electric carts? Can you do the drops at that time and go to electric? Yeah, that would, that would be fully the plan to do is, is we would want to put the the storage underneath in order to do that we would have to become electric we can't put the gas underneath yeah. so we would want to go electric at that point anyways to be green friendly if you will and then better for us as well we would bring in the electricity needed but that would be a benefit for us to do that yes that was a good time and i just wondered also is you know given the given the location of the clubhouse and and the openness um is there any any uh, thought to possibly do solar at that time to help offset some of the costs and there might be grants available as a result of solar on the on the roof of that facility and might be worth taking advantage of. Yeah, I'm sure when we, we get to all those steps, we'll definitely look at any potential cost savings for it. Um, there are, I know the town's taking big initiatives to the solar, so that would be a big big thing. We'll definitely incorporate anything like that into the, to the design of it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the, uh, one of the one of the bigger areas that would be a potential for solar would also be that expanded parking lot, which is many, many times bigger than um, you do a canopy. So right. Right. All right. Any other questions on how the GEC runs, works with operations, etc. Set there for you uh, comfortable. <laughs> Okay, um, now just so you all know, if you are interested in becoming a member, you have to fill out a membership uh, request form, an application form. Uh, Pam Barnes at this, at the. Um, it's the talent hall. bank, yeah, the talent bank form. Yep, the application. And then at some point, uh, one of the select and I think this year it is um, Dan Horgan will meet with members of the GEC and we'll do some interviews and make some appointments and that would be great. I want to thank you for your participation and your interest. And um, uh, Frank uh, sent me his, um, his application um, once they closed the town hall, uh, since I couldn't bring it down there myself, I, fill, I filled it out online and filed it online. So um, just, just so that you know, Frank, that I, you know, I, your application did get filed. Thank you. 
You can also send them to me. I go down there quite a bit to drop them off. If that's well, if that's easier too. I just yeah. kept just, just curious. I'm, I uh, I filled it out online and submitted it. Um, and you mentioned Pam's name. Should we be contacting her to set up a schedule, or will they be contacting us? No, we'll be cut. We'll they'll contact you. Okay. Yeah. Um, but at this time, everything is it's. It's it. We're, we're working at the town speed for getting things done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and also, as part of the process, after the interviews, then it has to be submitted to the entire board. And they have wow. to vote to approve um, the selection. And that can take some time, too, because it has to get on their agenda and even though it's not necessarily a big deal for them to talk about or anything, they generally just rubber stamp whatever uh, selection is made. It, it still causes things to get dragged out. So um, we're, we're trying to move things along as best we can, but sometimes it's not up to us. And Frank, just because it just says Frank's pad, what's the, how do I spell your last name? It, it's, it's Jay Frapery. So. Oh, Jay, that, not, it's Frank. When he, he says, says Frank, Frank, yeah. Well, there's Frank, Frank Fields <laughs> is here too, but the one Frank's, that says, the one that says uh, Frank's iPad is Jay. My, my, okay. real, my formal name is Frank. I go by Jay. It's a nickname. Okay. All right, okay. that makes sense. Just keeping um, Richard on his toes. I like it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't hear anything in the next few weeks, don't panic. Uh, it's the way it goes. Um, okay. If you have any additional questions for us, um, email the our the um, site again, or give any one of us a call to discuss. Thank and you. again, thank you for your interest. And and you have the GEC chairperson email right. account. You can you can get a message to me, and I can get it out to everybody else as well. And anybody who needs to know. Hey. Uh, moving right along to number six, uh, we had talked about starting to just um, put a plan together for capital improvements. And Richard did put together an initial spreadsheet, which we could start building against. And I just want to let you know that um, we have started thinking about it. And the, for the rest of us, we should kind of think about it, maybe move it to our next meeting after we get the, it would probably be a good thing to find out some of the fees and the stuff for the Bass River plan. And so this and get the list. I know right now we need new windows. We need siding, Scott. Yeah, the two big things, uh, I mean, there's a lot, but the two, <laughs> two big things on <laughs> on the list right now is uh to coincide with a roof at bay Ray, we do need to do the siding as anyone has seen the building it it needs it badly and i'm assuming at this point the windows need it as well so that's what we're going to go for funding for is the siding and the windows at bay Ray clubhouse but we're going to uh tune that in with the cart barn as well because that also needs a new roof and siding and a possible extension for all the carts so we want to do that project as one Okay. Right. Uh, that's the biggest one we got going that we want to continue. That's what we're working on to go to fall town meeting. Um, as far as the other ones, like the, the links, and then, you know, we do know that we have irrigation issues over there. We do know there's drainage issue over there. Some of the drainage work might get solved by um, CDM Smith as part of their contract overseeing it. And it is sinking a little bit. They might be able to take some of that off our hands. Uh, the bunker needs needs work, but we need some farmer answers of what's happening over there before we invest serious money. And then at Base Bass River, there's a lot of not doing anything at this point until we have a formal of what's happening with the wastewater agreement. But like like Tim had mentioned in the conversation, there was a definite plan to do pretty similar. Uh, renovation that, that we did at Bayberry over there uh, in 2023, 24 anyway. So we, we do know we need to do work over there. Having that under the wastewater just gets a lot more done at one time. And, so that's, 
and preferably we'll get some offsets from wastewater towards some of those expenses. Right. Lots of revenues. Right. Wastewater brings its whole new challenges as well, but a lot of the stuff that we want to do helps by getting in the wastewater agreement. Yeah. So I think we should probably table this for the maybe the next month to get going on more discussions on this, but I just everybody should be thinking about it and how we should pursue this. Because I think it's at some point time to go to the board of selectmen and say this is what can I do? our expenses are. Well, I'm making this. I mean, you want to pay attention to that. I'll go back to you. It's funny. Excuse me. What? Paul, are you trying to talk to us? Or? No, I'm sorry. I, I got <laughs> off and on and I forgot to mute. I'm going to mute it. Sorry. <laughs> no. That's no, no, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other member concerns that um, anyone would like to bring up? It's not necessarily a concern, but in um, in trying to help people out with, with filing applications and things on the town website, I happen to start exploring around the part where it says, you know, I want to uh, join a committee, et cetera. And so I clicked on the GEC committee listing and the list of names there is 18 years old. <laughs> The only person on that Sorry, list funny, but I'll, uh... Andrew Martin is still on the list, but he, you know, and several of the members like uh, George O'Keefe uh, are no longer with us as well. So um, it, it's, it's really a, a little bit um, out of date. Um, I don't uh, know who, was, who, who was responsible for our website and maintaining it. No, he's not. He's not talking about ours. No, this Sorry. is the town no, no, website. I'm, I know it's the town website. When I say ours, I mean our, our portion of the town's website. Yeah. It looks it looks like it's a part of the town website that that they just don't keep track of. And somebody set it up once a long time ago, and no one has ever been tasked with going back and updating the names of people who are in the different committees. I have a, a contact for the website for the town as well as uh, I'll talk to IT to see what we can do to update I mean, all that. The, our website still still has Kristen Seymour on the committee and still has me as the chairperson. I'll, I will fix that tomorrow if that's the case. Sorry about that. That one's easy. Okay. Yeah, but this is on the town website. Um, it also has a link there where you can get the... Um, where you can go to the um, the GEC uh, minutes, but the first time I clicked on it, the the listing for the minutes were uh, over a year old. The second time I went back, it was more up to date. But it rather than going straight to the agenda page on the uh, town website, where you look up the different, you know, where you can go for all the different town committees and look them up, uh -huh. there was a link um on that uh that that section where it lists the different committees that had a, li a link to the minutes gec minutes and um it wasn't a, it wasn't altogether accurate the first time i checked on it well i know we did spend some time updating the minutes anita did to make yeah sure i think there's there's, there's they're doing it a new way where you can find it and if you do it the old way there's like two ways you can access it and we and and they think they're aware of it they're trying not to do the old way and just have it go through the agenda center and everything should be right there all right they, under the committee any other comments suggestions um scott just if the, on the next newsletter if we could have a couple of days um to review yeah positions. i'll actually give you some out next week and then we're just gonna total up the membership once it's there so you guys can have it and then just as long as i get it back before the 27th we're good to go sounds good all right i guess we're anybody would like to make a motion that we adjourn i'll make a motion to adjourn you guys uh before you do that you guys want to meet in february so do you want to set a date um it should be Maybe.
Is five o'clock still good for everybody? Yes. Okay. Do so you want to want to do February eighth? February eighth would be the 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 yeah, second one day. Yeah, that's the official. Yep. Sound good, everyone? Works for me. All right. Two eight okay. at five o'clock. Very good. All right. We need to second the motion. Well, I will adjourn. second the motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, wait we need to roll call it. We have to roll call it. You to roll oh, call sorry it. about that. Andy? Aye. Bev? I think she adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> she waved Chris? her hand. She says aye. Yes. Uh, Richard? Yes. Ted? Yes. Ellen agrees. All right. And we're done. We're done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Okay. Ted, don't, be, don't be incognito next week. Put you next month. Put your picture in. <laughs> the, the, the headshot, right? <laughs> no, that's it's just the headshot. Yeah. Okay. yeah just the headshot. <laughs> yeah. Bye, I'm everybody. Not buying a camera. Bye. Just Bye. 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 Bye.